Mr. Chairman, it sometimes happens that we here in Congress pass policies that don't turn out as good in the real world as they looked on the drafting paper. And despite our best intentions and due diligence, the law of unintended consequences rears its ugly head, forcing us to revisit our earlier policy decisions. That's what I believe is happening today in regard to corn-based ethanol, and I commend you, Mr. Chairman, for holding this hearing so that we can again look at the renewable fuel standards so that we can ensure that we get the results we seek without causing more problems in the future. I remember back when we passed the ethanol mandates back in the Energy Policy Act. Corn ethanol was presented almost as a holy grail solution to the challenges presented by our dependence on foreign oil. It seemed at the time that we could not only start to break the change of this, chains of this dependence, but we could do it in a way that would benefit the American farmer and put us on a path to combating global warming. While time has proven that some benefits have resulted in this policy, most notably the increased profits in the agricultural sector, I believe its negatives today far outweighs its benefits. I have said time and time again that there is no silver bullet to address the dual challenges of energy independence and global warming. There is no one policy we can adopt or one technology we can develop to meet these challenges. Unfortunately, our committee and our Congress essentially chose food-based ethanol and encouraged the private sector through authorizations in the tax code to pick this biofuel over others. We must learn from this mistake and roll back these policies. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not advocating for a rollback of the entire re renewable fuel standards, as I believe the standard itself can help move us towards energy independence. What I am advocating is that we roll back the support structure that food-based ethanol receives and which other promising biofuels are not. We need to encourage all of these advances, not pick the one we can sell better at home. Food prices are rising, rainforests are being deforested, and we need to understand the real-world realities that this policy has caused. Any food that is used for fuel is a food that won't be used to feed our nation and to a large extent the world. We have other options such as algae, municipal waste and the like, which offer a path towards energy independence but don't put the burden on the backs of the hungry to pay for it or pay for it by destroying rainforest. In conclusion, Mr. Chairman, we need to revisit this policy and back away from food to fuel policies and instead accelerate the development of biofuels that don't put our energy needs ahead of the needs of the hungry or the environment. With that, Mr. Chairman, I yield back the balance of my time.